You're listening to After No War, broadcasting from the beautiful South Berlin. Except no substitute. Hello, dear listeners. Welcome to Achtung Mill, a special edition, um, one in which the interviewer's tables are turned. Um, joining me on the show today is my co-presenter of the Mill History uh, shows, Mr. Neil Fissler, today in the role of interviewee. How are you doing, Neil? Uh, very nervous, Nick, but <laughs> not bad at all, mate. I, well, I've um, interviewed that many people, including a couple this morning about various things, and all of a sudden <laughs> I'm on the receiving end of it. It's going to be superb, mate. Morphine voice, as I've described on Twitter, doesn't uh, turn people off. Don't take no notice of Twitter. And thankfully, I'm not Jeremy Paxman, so, um, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't put myself in that category. I'm a, I'm a willing amateur, listeners. The reason for Neil joining us in his unfamiliar role of interviewee is an absolutely masterful new book that you're bringing out, Neil, along with Dave Sullivan, who's, um, I think, fairly well known around the the older Mill set as a, a kind of a, um, a fount of, absolute fount of Mill knowledge. Um, and it's it's a book... Um, strategically timed for Christmas, Neil, um, called The Mill Who's Who. Um, fantastic piece of work you've done here. Mate, it's a book that's probably been in the, in the, in the research since the 70s. I can't claim to have only come on board five or ten years ago, only five or ten years ago. Only, it's like, well. It's that long to yeah. get this done. But, yeah, Jim Creasy, uh, uh, started it all, I guess. A very well respected mm. Millwall fan and a very well respected football genealogist and historian uh, started putting this together uh, in the 70s. Wow. And then I think Dave Sullivan went on board. And now genealogy is quite interesting because and quite easy because you just sit down all day i've, I've sat i've sat down all morning yeah. working on stuff and you just use uh, websites and various other research material but they started it uh, when you at the go through the big books at st catherine or somerset house yeah um i guess or local library work and and press um archives and all sorts um, different. It was a physical thing once upon a time, um, whereas now, as you say, the internet does make things simpler to some extent. I mean, I, I noticed um, the dedication in the early part of the book to Jim. Um, I never met Jim. I do know Dave, um, and obviously I know yourself, Neil, but um, Jim, I've heard the name, um, but he sounds like an absolute um, rock of, of Millwall historical knowledge. Mate, he was a... Uh... You had to get to know Jim, but once you got to know Jim, mm. he was a fantastic bloke. Knew so much and taught me so much about genealogy. Right, and he 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 was actually a Millwall fan, I, I believe, from the year dot. Yeah, and uh, um, contributed to the program in the seventies. If you if you read programs. Of the mid to late seventies, early eighties, Jim Creasy's name pops up quite a lot in connection with discovering ex ex Millwall players, and he kept in touch with a lot of players from the thirties, forties, even mm. earlier than that. And then he stopped going because he found that he had so many inquiries <laughs> from. <laughs> From from fellow football historians wanting yeah. genealogy help, <laughs> that he had to devote Saturday afternoons. <laughs> were either at Collingdale after doing his lunch break at Somerset House during the yeah. week, and then yeah. go, and then toddling off to the newspaper library at Collingdale. That there wasn't any time for Millwall, and that's when he caught up with all of his correspondence. That's one of the best reasons I've heard for not going. Normally, it involves some kind of cataclysmic. Um, I'm never going to set foot in the den because I've done. You've done something, or some awful showing, or something. But I, I like that as a, as a reason for having to uh, relinquish following. Uh, well, going to Millwall at least. Um, no, it's, it, I mean just to explain to listeners, the book is a who's who, li quite literally, of players. Um, have played for Mill since pretty much since formation. Now, I mean, some of the some of the research is is quite incredible. I, mean, I was 
I've just picked out one name um, just to give listeners a flavour of the level of research that's gone into this. Um, there's a one EA Perry, um, who apparently was a right half for Millwall Athletic in 1890 to 90. He played one game, one game, listeners. Um, that was a uh, a, f- a two, three two loss in the cup against Dilford. Um, we don't have first names for him, but we do have E. A. Perry. Um, this game played in the, on the fourth of October, eighteen ninety. Um, a draftee, a local man, drafted by Fred Kidd, drafted into playing in a, a, a FA Cup defeat at the hands of Ilford at the Athletic Grounds. And there's a short bit of detail about the game, and then. E.A. Perry's, um, you know, kind of career or whatever you want to call it at, at that point. That's the level of detail. Neil, that is incredible. I mean, to find that kind of stuff is an amazing. What we've tried to do is is we've tried to write 100-word profiles on everybody mm. that's played for the club since 1885. And uh, no matter how many games they place, you've got to try and condense it down. Otherwise, yeah. I've been editing this book for the last five years seriously, and to, and you could and you could run wild with some profiles. Well, some players obviously will make much, much more of an impact. But you, as you say, exactly. I mean, each player is given a, a hundred words or so as a brief summary, and some will be harder than others to to do that. And I mean, you kind of answered one of my main questions, which was how long was this book in the making? And oh. I'm, I'm frankly amazed that Jim was at it in the 70s. I mean, it, it, it's it's an incredible piece of work. It, it, in my opinion, and, I'm, you know, you're a mate, so, you know, I, I don't mean to to, to flatter um, where it's not, not um, deserved. But honestly, listeners, this is a book that I would put on a par with the um, the great Millwall histories. I'm, talking, I'm thinking of Lions of the South. I mean, that, that, that to me is a great tribute because it's at a level of, of detail that I find absolutely amazing, Neil. Um, I, I've got to take my hat off to you, mate. Mate, what you, what you find with this is it's like painting the fourth bridge. Yeah, you never yeah. finish this. <laughs> uh, there will be an update... Uh, there will be updates, yeah. updates, and updates, and updates. Because as I say in the in the in the dedication to Jim in the front of it, yeah. Jim was always trying to find that elusive piece of information, like E. A. Perry's first name and, yeah. so, and, <laughs> and a middle name, where he was born, where he died. Yeah, you've always got that elusive piece of information that you're trying to find and so it's an addiction it is a serious addiction i can believe it i can believe it um i mean there was a couple of players and i think they were called wilson but there was a couple we've only have all we have are surnames we don't even have initials and you know you, you, it's it's incredible to find these players and it's incredible to have some detail on them but as you say i imagine that would tug at the completest part of your brain where you want to find out who what were their names who were they what what was the what was the backstory there you know that kind of level it's amazing what's been put into this honestly yeah mate you tend to find that the further you go back and for a club like Millwall yeah the record keeping was pretty slap dash yeah especially in the 1880s so somebody might just have played a game and it's not like now where newspaper coverage is wall to wall and you've got the internet and you've got somebody on Hoff that might know somebody, yeah, knows yeah. somebody and yeah. and it's fairly easy to research. Back then, you just got the barest details in newspapers. And if some guy played one game, yeah. and, was, and back then Millwall were a local team on the island, weren't they? Absolutely. It's Williams, um, not Wilson, Wilson, listeners, by the way. Um, Williams, all we know of this player is a centre-half, nil in 1904-5, to five, one game. Williams is all we have. Um, he played for Bolin Castle FC and then Mill Athletic as an amateur. And he made one appearance uh, versus Reading in the London League Premier Division clash against Clapton Orient yeah, you in 1904. With him, yeah, well, he actually comes back to me now because there were East End papers so mm. you do find reference to a Williams yeah, uh, of Bowling Castle. But the trouble yeah. is, 
you try looking for a Williams in the East End <laughs> around about that time, you've got no initial to work with. He was just purely Williams. <laughs> he didn't even appear on the... Yeah, but they had very basic programs back then. They were just little more than cards, I think, with the players' names printed on. You've got nothing to work with. So, unfortunately, it's that elusive piece of information that that you'll never find. It's nigh on impossible. I notice, I mean, I, I, just on the little dabbling listeners that I've done trying to do some of these shows where you look at old press reports, Neil, particularly the further back you go, the more... Um, <laughs> Kind of formal or dismissive, I don't know, but you just referred to as a surname, Fistler, took the field, you know, and Hart play, you know, Hart maybe missed a, a good chance, and that's all you see. You don't see a first name. It, it, I think there was something of a class thing then that players of uh, the working class game of football were often just referred to as a surname, and that was all you're going to get in the match day report. So I can see how, you know, a one, a one appearance man, such as Williams, all we know him as. You know, that's all you're going to get. And it's, it must be quite hard to find much more detail. I mean, as you say, with a common name, that's going to be a tough gig. Mate, earlier on, I was looking at an England amateur player and called uh, Collins. And he was called, uh, I'm going to refer to some notes here. He was E.C. Collins. Right. And, all of, and that's all I had was E.C. Collins. So, just that could be almost anybody, really, couldn't it? Mm, but, very common name, yeah. But luckily, he toured uh, New Zealand with England amateurs. Right. So then you're able to look at the the travel record, and that gave right. him wow. that he was called Edward Collins, and he lived on Boundary Road in East Ham, <laughs> and that he was a butcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was 37. So I look on the 1939 register, lo and behold, he's living there with his parents. Right, okay. Father the butcher, gives his full his full name and initial, his date of birth. And from that, you can determine that you can find a birth and That's death. what you mean, yeah. Yeah, and it's easy. Yeah, but you talk about Jim Creasy would have to have looked through thousands of these onking great books trying to physically, find... yeah, not not flicking through a screen, you know. If this yeah, is no, and I find it in it took me, I think it took me about 10 minutes to work up a complete or a near enough profile to start looking for family for him, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you haven't got that luxury with the likes of Williams because Williams in East London, he, well, he was an amateur footballer. Yeah. He didn't play for anybody else of any bo- of, of any no- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like he went and played for Clapton or somebody. So you can go to, I think all, all well, yeah, all the Clapton's uh, records are at Bishopsgate Library. So you can go and consult with their minute book and things really? like that and handbooks but you haven't got that luxury and Millwall one of those clubs that or in fact a lot of clubs they just chuck things out mm. at various stages bloody bloody great minute books that would have helped you and uh, <laughs> they weren't thinking ahead were they I've yeah always... no, there was no they people didn't pay attention to history back then who you have like a joke with one or two genealogists and football historians. Anybody that's ever played football ought to have been made to have filled out a sheet <laughs> <laughs> with their full name, date of birth, place of birth. For future historians. Yes. Yeah. And, well, we could go away and consult with that, but we don't have that luxury. So, yeah, well, hopefully people see things like that and take it as you had, because part of the Part of the nervousness when you write a book like this is is because you're so close to the club and you're so close to mm. to everything. You just want, you just hope and pray that people like it because you know Millwall crowd, the most critical <laughs> critical <laughs> crowd in the world, aren't we? Us? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'd be yeah, well, I'd be exactly the same. So it's just an apprehensiveness that we have done the best we can possibly do. 
I, th- I think you can hold your head up proudly, yourself, Dave. And I notice uh, credits on the front cover to to Jim Creasy, who we've mentioned, also Chris Bethel, who I, I do know, Chris. Um, you can hold your collective heads up proudly because this I, I, I've i always felt that Lions of the South is kind of like a definitive book. I, I constantly look at it, especially when we do our shows and we're looking back to times way gone and trying to relate what I'm reading there with what I can find on, on online in the press um, archives. But um, the the level of detail, listen, I'm just, I picked out a few players for us just to, to look at. Some will be more recent than others. But it, I, I think what struck me, and because I, I was wondering how you might approach one or two of the more recent players, Neil, where emotions are still, um, if not raw, it's, you know, it's still quite sore in some cases, but... Um, you, you keep a fairly neutral tone, I think, in fairness to the production, because I think there's no other way to really do a thing like this. No, mate, you, you, you're writing about history, yeah. yeah, and you've got to write it straight down the middle. You don't want to offend anybody. You no, 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 no. You don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want your personal feelings about. Uh, players or what you think about players and know we all rant about players and we in the all moment a lot players. you can say a lot can't yeah. in the moment but i think in, in the cold light I, I found that even following last saturday against luton um in the moment you feel so so pissed off and things can come out the wrong way i think with a couple of days worth of cooling off you can um you can take a view and i think that what i've admired about what you've done here is with some players who i don't know how do you want to put it that weren't as popular as others shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we're told so <laughs> in no uncertain terms but i mean you know you, you've adopted a correct you're right is it's, it's, you're, you're depicting them in a in a, a history context and so you've got to be straight down the line it's got to be neutrally done Achtung, Mailball. I picked out just randomly, listeners, one or two names that my eyes fall upon as I flick through before speaking to Neil. Um, and just as an example, perhaps, of, of, of that, I mean, I picked out Magai Gway. And I've, another fascination is you get the full names on here, Neil. You've got Magai Gway's full name, which I'm going to attempt to pronounce, as is my one. Magai Falilu D. D. Nelson Gway, born in nogent sur marne in France on the 6th of July, 1990. 35 games, five goals, 2014-15. There's a series of um, <clears throat> clubs, French clubs. Um, Everton, I, I didn't realise he played, he played at Everton. And then his, his career after Millwall, where he's playing in, in it looks like Turkey. Um, and then, then um, amazingly, I, I, I hadn't realised he's, he's, he's still playing in Azerbaijan. That's incredible. Mate, uh... I think he was one of those players that didn't he? He scored a did he score space? He scored a wonderful goal. I went up to Sheffield Wednesday against well, Sheffield. I, mean, I, was, I was trying to think of the opposition. I was trying to see if I'd put it in the book. But it was one of the early shows that I, I did um, doing this, and I'd made an effort to go up to Wednesday. It was a midweek game. I uh, stayed over up there. And came back next day, and and there was a there was a late like I think it was like ninety plus six equaliser, and it, they're, they're they're the wine of life, you know those those moments that Maguire yeah. I, I could forgive him a lot. I don't. He fell foul of Ian Holloway and and his um, thoughts and comments on his weight, he, he's carrying a little bit of body fat. Um, who knows? But I could forgive him a bit of body fat for that one moment because it was one of those long away nights where you've 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 been one nil behind for the whole game, and you're now in six minutes deep into added time and he, he put it away um and he still lives in the in the moment and it was one of the early shows that i did so Magai Gwe, i've always felt a bit of a I connect, always connection with him. Of, uh, he had something about him i think yeah he i agree games that season and you always felt excited when he picked the ball up because you just didn't know what was going to happen i don't think he knew what was he going did, to happen he did but he could finish he had a powerful shot and he could finish and he was he one did. of a little bit like um, Aidan O'Brien, you know, you, it would fade, but he could produce when you least expected it. And um, I mean, it's, it's 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 a great. I mean, again, hundred words, listeners, and it gives you a good um, pen picture. I think was the old expression in the programs, a pen picture <laughs> of Mackay Gways as a French youth, and he, he quit athletics to pursue a career in the pro game and moved to Everton before finishing up at the, at the Den. 
and then obviously moving on eventually to to finish playing in or well, maybe he's still playing in Azerbaijan, which um I find that this is the small details like that, Neil, the fascination of this book, I find. Yeah, no, it goes back to the point that I said about painting the fourth bridge. Yeah. <laughs> because, Go on. Go on. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep up to date with all of these people. And to be quite honest, yeah, when something does spark you, something will pop up on Twitter or yeah. on Hoff, and then you'll think, oh, I wonder what happened to whatever became of him. And the answer's in my book. <laughs> Which is why you need to buy it, listeners. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm conscious we haven't told you where and when it will be coming out. Um, November the 13th, I think you said, Neil, wasn't it? It's being produced. Printed. Yeah, it's on my birthday on November the 13th. It's available. Hint, hint. It's Neil's birthday on the 13th, and you can buy a book as your birthday present to Neil Fistler. Yeah, uh, uh, it's been produced by a, a very good friend of ours uh, who's been on a few shows, yeah. Merv Payne Absolutely. and Victor Publishing. And I've got to pay tribute to Merv. Uh, when I got that PDF that I sent you, because we've mm. only printed a couple of author copies at the moment, yeah. and uh, I sent him a word profile of like 300 and some <laughs> thousand words. <laughs> you didn't even lay it out, Fissler. <laughs> and then it's come back as that. It's yeah? incredible, yeah. With the help of Chris Bethel, who I must say everybody knows Chris. Yeah, Chris is well known. Uh, yeah, very. He yeah. has got the most amazing photo archive. He sent us, well, we asked him for like 50 pictures and he sent us 700. <laughs> well, this is another beauty of the book. I just want to mention, I mean, we're, we're a little bit all over the place. Forgive me, listeners. I'm not a professional interviewer. But one of the beauties of the book is the photo archive, as you say. I mean, it's some wonderful. The, the one there's one of Bill Voicey, who we've mentioned a good few times now on on the show, and we will continue to mention him because I, I, he, he's a wonderful, wonderful figure. But it's a great shot of him wearing his England shirt, Neil. Yeah, Chris has got. Oh, he has got. He provides a lot of all, all of the historical uh, photos for the program. Wonderful, um, it's absolutely um, wonderful, and some of the pictures that he comes up with that he's got in his archive yeah they're just absolutely unbelievable they really are and that's what we've tried to do is we or yeah well i just left a selection of the pictures to merv merv merv's far better at that kind of stuff than i am and it's a uh, it's a beautiful it, book to look at and i, I think that's superb some absolute beauts like that voisey one one that's yeah in there uh, that's Bill Voicey, that our first World War hero, winner of um, I think it was the Belgian Croix de Guerre and uh, the Distinguished Conduct Medal, if memory serves. Um, wearing his England shirt, he was he was capped for England just after the end of the first conflict, the first the Great War, and it's a wonderful photo in its own right. I mean, the the, the imagery throughout the whole book really struck me when I looked at the PDF. Now it's um, it's very visually pleasing to look at. Um, packed with detail and I'm just going to move along to the second name that my eye fell, fell upon um, and I, I hadn't realised he'd actually played for the Lions but um, well, the Dockers and that Sir George Roby CBE um, the uh, musical comedian listeners Shakespearean actor George Roby George um, was known as the Prime Minister of Murph I love <laughs> I want a name like that, like the, the Prime Minister of Podcasting. Um, he, he was a Prime Minister of Murph. He played football at Cambridge University, uh, didn't win the, his, his uh, blue, which was the, uh, the uh, to be uh, played by for the Cambridge side. But he did play for the Dockers in the Western League, signing for us in 1902, uh, two spells, 1902 to three and 1906 to seven, three games. Um, he was a major musical star and, and a big, a big name, show business name by the standards of the day. Now, wasn't he, George? Man, he was an absolutely huge name. So George Roby, the Prime Minister of Murphy. Yeah, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, wasn't it? Uh, Kelly. Uh, yeah, didn't Kelly Webster call you the Podfather? <laughs> <laughs> it's not as good as the Prime Minister of Murph. I want, I want just a George Roby's level of accolade. <laughs> oh, but no, he, stupid was, FCAs. <laughs> he was an absolutely massive name and quite yeah. a good footballer by all accounts. But but because he was so good at everything else that he did, he, he it kind of limited his football career. Uh, they, uh, just reading yeah. the, the 
the, the, the piece here. It was signed as a kind of a, 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 a not quite a fundraiser, but certainly it was um, it was seen as a as, as a kind of a marquee signing because it would bring bodies through the through the gates and generate money for it, our it ever cash strapped club. You know. Yeah, well, literally, it was. If you look at the uh, if you look at the British newspaper archive, yeah, and you look for when Sir George Roby signed for us, pretty much it was uh, it was a publicity thing to get more people through the gate, and they knew that if he played, people would turn up to watch him. Absolutely, um, um, it, we've always had a. Uh, it was like a... football in it, it, it was like a yeah, you could have liken it to clickbait, I think. It was <laughs> <laughs> But we've always had a taste for that as a club, Neil, haven't we? I mean but I think there's it's, it's it's strange when you read these little pieces, listeners, because I mean as, as Neil Wright he puts it, I mean stunt, clickbait, whatever you want to call it, it it was publicity. Get bodies through the, the gates at the uh, the on, on the island at the time. But we've always, as a club, we've always got in for these stunt type signings. I'm thinking of Chris Kelly in the seventies. I'm thinking, even to be honest, the return of Tim Cahill. Um, these kind yeah, of the Russians, the Russians, these splashy moments where uh, <laughs> the start of the Gary Taylor Fletcher. Right? <laughs> He's in there. Boggled everyone else, isn't it? And uh, oh, holidays God. appointment. Yeah, yeah, and um, but we seem to have a taste for the showy, and and it's 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 a very strange um, trait in what is actually always has been, and I hope probably always will be a working class club. But we do seem to have a bit of a taste for showbiz splash, and and they're they're rarely that successful, but they do cause a bit of a stir in the moment, and for that I love us. I mean, Sir George Roby was also a decent cricketer here. He always played for the MCC. Um, he, he did, and he also played for like. So Hull, Glasgow Rangers, Dundee, yeah. and Shepherd's Bush, which I think is now QPR, isn't it? It was one of the early guys. Yeah, one of their incarnations, yeah. Of Coins Park Rangers. So he was a great all-round sportsman. I think he was actually a better cricketer than he was footballer. a footballer, but he was a pretty, pretty good footballer. But he was even better at cricket, and he's more well... And I guess back then he was, he, he was such a huge name... Mm. That he didn't really, he couldn't really quit show business to go. I'm to trying go, to, <laughs> to give it to go and play football or cricket and earn next to nothing as you did back then. So I'm trying to think of a modern day equivalent for to sign Sir George Roby now would be like. Um... I can't get Robbie Williams out of my head, but I'm not sure that's quite the same level of talent. But anyway, it's like assigning Robbie Williams and playing him in in, in, in the championship, you know, for a couple of I games. The nearest thing you could actually think of recent times would be when Ian Botham signed for yeah yeah Scunthorpe for Yeovil and yeah. for yeah. Uh, and Scunthorpe. Scunthorpe. but yeah. Oh, yeah, the nearest thing would actually have been, I guess, would have been Mark Wright. Uh, Josh Wright's brother when he signed for Crawley last yeah. season, and uh, I think he turned out in a few games, didn't he? And the yeah, didn't, didn't uh, Louis Tomlinson of One Direction play for uh, Doncaster or somebody? You're you're way ahead of me on the celebrity <laughs> culture now, Fistler. You're way out in front of me here, mate. You know, yeah, no, well, I'm <laughs> just a journalist at the end of the day, <laughs> aren't I? I've returned. Yeah, yeah, well, nobody wants to know what's inside this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! The website, listeners, will be after November the thirteenth. VictorPublishing.co.uk. Um, it's it's actually listed on there. It's not for sale as yet. It's not gone into uh, print production yet, but it will yeah, be available. You can pre-order it now if you like, and then it will be. Any idea how much the the cost will be, Neil, when 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 it comes, or has that been set yet, mate? I think it's about nineteen ninety five. So let's call it twenty quid plus whatever packaging and, and and postage. I can I think it will be the best twenty quid that you'll spend, listeners. Um, this this book will will join the likes of Lions of the South and um, I've got Richard Lindsay's complete record, stuff like that. It's it's at that level. Um, I think if you're any kind of Mill fan, you will want this because it is endlessly fascinating. And the details are um, they appeal to my my mind anyway. And on that subject, now I'm looking at Anthony Junior Witter as we speak. Anthony Junior Witter, Tony Witter. There was only one Tony Witter in the Witter Wonderland, wasn't there? In the nineties. Yes. Yeah. Very difficult man to track down at the time. 
kind of a, he was he summed up Millwall at that period really didn't he? I think he sums up Millwall much more. Is a good point because I was thinking trying to think how to word it because. Um, Tony Witter, um, for those that don't know, um, for, for those of us of a certain age, the club had fallen into uh, the third division, whatever it was called in League Two, or it may have been, but um, played 118 times for us between 94 and 98. These were tough times to be a Mill fan. He scored twice for us. Um, he was born in 1965. He'd had a, um, a peripatetic Career, Uxbridge, Grays, Crystal Palace, QPR, Millwall on loan, Plymouth, Reading. He'd been around the track a few times, Neil Tony, hadn't he? Um, and then, and wow. the, you know, the pen, the pen picture says he was a, an electrical engineer before he turned professional with Crystal Palace. Yeah, and, God, that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> and then, after, I mean, this, this, the reason I say he, he sums up Millwall because he he's come from a working background. Played some football. I mean, you know, um, I, I liked him. I mean, there was clear he, he was at a level, he was at our level as a defender, but he was a good defender in League, uh, league One terms or whatever, whatever it was called at the time. After giving up the game, he's returned back to being an electrician. Um, I like, I don't know, it appeals to something in me that that's who we are. You know, he, he's, he's, he's a man of the... He could, be on the, he could be sat in the terraces with us just as easily as being out there on the pitch. I yeah, Lee Gregory was also, I think, an of apprentice course. electrician, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. And similar type of story. And uh, somebody else that that you can relate to seems like a normal bloke, really. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. I think that's probably what it is. It's that normality. You could be sat next to him. You know, you could you could have a drink with him. You know, it was it was that kind of. I think as a club, we've always responded to those kinds of players. They. Um, Anything that kind of goes too far away from that template is is never we're never quite comfortable with it. But I think Tony Witter's story there is played at Northampton, Torquay, Welling, um, Bohemians, you name it. He's, he's been and played there, and he's gone back to being an electric electrician after the end of his career. I, I just like that as a different times. Perhaps maybe the money wasn't there in the game as much as it was nowadays. But it was that's a nice story, and I like I liked him as a defender, and I like that story. Um, I think he'd have made a little bit of money out of the game. Probably not much. He'd have made uh, probably better than the average wage back then. I don't think electricians were particularly well paid back then. Now they charge hundreds of pounds <laughs> an hour, don't they? they that's, a diff- that's a different news. podcast. <laughs> exactly. That's Nick, Nick and Neil's GB News podcast. <laughs> 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 Which is giving you an idea, no doubt. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. I, I think uh, I could do without the heat on that front. But yeah, Anthony yeah. Junior Witter, what a great name. I like Tony Witter, big favourite of mine. Um, as I say, I picked out these are just random players that I picked out here, listeners. Uh, we've gone past Dennis Wise, he's well known. We don't need to introduce Dennis Wise, but I, I also like uh, Darren Purse. I, I never realised that his dad was a Millwall fan, Darren Purse, I, I, the Millwall family, apparently. Mate, did you not listen to the podcast I did on that Millwall podcast where we interviewed him? No. I was actually, was actually talking about him. I shall yeah. never listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. No, I, I, it, that, Darren's story, I mean, I remember him playing for us and I knew he'd been around the track a few times, but I, I don't know why. I suppose because he played for Birmingham and West Brom. I pictured him being more of a Midlands base, but he's, he's born in Stepney. He's, he's, his family, his father's a Millwall fan. I, they just got past yeah, me. I didn't realise that. Yeah, grew up on the terraces. You, you, you talk to him, and he, and some of his great memories of are of the promotion winning yeah. side to the first division, and and travelling around and going to places like Liverpool and yeah things like that. I think he was probably just a bit too good to play for us, wasn't he? I think <laughs> around about when he started coming through as a footballer. He came to us quite late in his career, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, but he came to us right at the end of his career, really. He had a a very short loan spell with us. Yeah, and he's now an Oxford United Academy coach and director at football at Malcolm Arnold Academy. Um, One of the things I really like about these little... um, you know, um, portraits, whatever you want to call them, listeners, is that it gives you a bit of that. You do a where are you now, where are they now column in, in the league paper as well, Neil, don't you? And they're always fascinating to find out what became of these heroes of the terraces and what, what, what I mean, like Tony Witter, you know, going back to being an electrician, what became of them? 
Um, I think it's the curse of the Saturday hero that you, you know, in the moment you're a hero, and then as soon as five o'clock comes, or your career goes, it's that's it, it's gone. You know, but life continues in reality. Yeah, a lot of these who's who books, they don't like. I'm fascinated with what happened to a player yeah. after you finish playing football. Yeah, and a lot of who's who books don't go into that detail, and that's what we've tried to do on this. That I've spent countless hours on the telephone trying to trace people. There's a guy in there called Tom Bell who played a game for us just after World War II. Right. And I spent 18 months trying to find him. And he died four months before I got to <sighs> speak to him because he was from the northeast, grew up in Tottenham. Mm. Didn't know he grew up in Tottenham. He joined us from Hammersmith United and uh, had no other details. So we were looking in the northeast. It turns out that it settled in Muswell Hill, right? But because one of the one of the genealogists had spoke to him, but didn't think to get any other information from him, and uh, and I was trying to get him to tr- find out where he basically what had happened, his story, and that. And in the end, I ended up, I ended up buying the marriage certificate that I was convinced was him. (laughs) It was was one of three. (laughs) So I bought the one and it wasn't. So I went for one of the others. His wife had a brilliant maiden name. So I traced her. Yeah. So I traced the marriage, uh, phoned her up, no answer. So I phoned the son up who had an unusual name. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, dad died. Six months ago, oh. God almighty. there you go. I suppose that's he, was, risk, yeah. he was able to fill me in, but that is the level of detail that we've gone into, and that's the work that we've put in on this book. And it's everybody that's played a first team game, absolutely. For the club, I've seen I've seen comments of somebody might have played for us at some point, but if he didn't play a first team game, he isn't going to be in the book. But if he played a first team game we've gone to the ends of the world to try and find out about him. And hopefully it's ideal bog reading material. This, you can put this by the side of your bog. Um, yeah. It's, 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 I was gonna, just going to say a similar point. It's, it's kind of what I call dip in, dip out type reading. I, I wouldn't, as against a cover to cover job, I think what you would do if you buy this book, and I recommend that you do listeners, you would dip into it because uh, I mean, the last on my list there, which um, a similar kind of story, I suppose, uh, Barry Salvage, who I well remember from the 70s when my formative years as a Millwall fan, a very bright and attacking winger. Um, and I hadn't realised that that was his second spell at the club. And I, I didn't know that. He played on the left wing. Um, really exciting. But one of my favourites from one of my favourite seasons, 76, 77. Um, and I hadn't realised he'd passed away of a heart attack in the in, in the eighties. Um, I was on a fun run, a charity fun run, um, which you know it's it, it's it's a sad story, but it, I don't know. It's it's like finding out the ending of a of a movie some while after you've watched it. It's it's, uh, it's absolutely fascinating, listeners. Um, Barry Salvage, there we are. But yeah, two spells. I didn't and I didn't know that. So it's it's. A, <laughs> And it can endlessly teach you stuff about players you never knew before. Uh, I think that's the beauty of the production, Neil. Yeah, and I think, as we say on the back of the book, it's it's a reminder of players that you'd long forgotten about. Barry Sowell. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, um, one or two other. There's, it's, it's caked full of them. And uh, it's just a reminder that something might trigger you and you can refer to this and find out what they're doing and what became of them and uh, hopefully they're still alive. <laughs> It'll make a great Christmas present for the Millwall fan in your life, dear listeners. And I or recommend a birthday present. Just buy birthday it. Present. Yeah, well, you'll meet birthday present. Yeah, you'll meet birthday present. As I always have to do, I always have to look up to see who's in the Z section of any reference book, A to Z. I always have to look to see who's the last one in there. And I can reveal that the last uh, Z uh, name is one Alvin the Kenneth Darup Zohor. Ken Zohor. <laughs> That's the last one. He just edges out uh, Chris Zabrowski. 
um, in, in the Z in the Z stake. So Zohor is our, is the Z, is last one in the book. Um, I don't know why I've always had a need to look for the Z. Never yeah, well, we've before. made it up until the end of last season. I think there's one or two transfers from the summer. Yeah, uh, Lee Gregory's is mentioned in there, and uh, but 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 we kept on putting it off. I kept on putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. Then in the summer, I just said, "You got to no. go for it." Well, you no, can go on forever like that, can't yeah. you? It's an end. Yeah, you can, and that and that was the thing. Jim has Jim worked on virtually every who's who that's ever been written in clubs doing the genealogy stuff that you have the other teams that players played for. Yeah. And and you can just go on and on and on and on. And I must admit, when I sent that file to Merv, it <laughs> a whole sense of relief came over my body. The burden has been relieved <laughs> relieved of it. Yeah. Christ, I don't have to worry about this anymore. But then <laughs> but well then I've got a bloody great file that people will be able to download at, uh, whenever they like of of corrections. So, uh, well, it's um, uh, yeah, additions, not corrections. Sorry, but I mean, you you cannot you cannot produce a work of this level and this amount of information and not find bits and pieces. You, you just will, and uh, whether you're you know uh, one the greatest or, or 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 the or whatever you want to call it, it's just in the nature of it. And also, it's a moving target because players move constantly. So, you know, as you say, you've got to drop a, a bar on it at some point. Um, I really, really admire what you've done here, Neil, yourself, and Dave, Jim, and Chris, because this is this is fantastic stuff. Um, if you listeners, if you're ever thinking of doing a Mill History podcast series yourselves, this is a real good starting point. <laughs> mate, you can sound like you know it all with this book, Neil. <laughs> mate, I've got to give yeah, well, I've got to give props to Dan actually on on uh, Lions, oh, Lions TV. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Etienne Vivia. Yeah, what a fucking discovery that scoop. was! And, it was a real scoop. Well done, Dan. Yeah, and a, and he tweeted earlier on that it was a viewer of his bumped into him in an Amsterdam physio clinic yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've trying to find Etienne Revere was e. probably. I think I've spoken to. I think we've got details of pretty much all, but about five or ten. Yeah post-war players, their post-playing careers. But Etienne Revere was one that... Elusive. Elusive. Totally elusive. And I looked for him. I can find E.C. Collins, who played for <laughs> Orton Avenue in 1935. I can work up his family tree, but I can't find Etienne Revere. Did that, <laughs> that was... Uh, there we are. Luck plays its part as much as anything. But what a scoop for Dan. I, I've seen some of the clips that he's put out on social media. And what a character, Neil. What a character Etienne Vervia seems to be, mate. Yeah, the biggest shot was he, he posted a photo of him. Yeah. Uh, I think it was just a screen grab, wasn't it? Yeah. And that uh, and that DA that he had is gone. Yeah. He's bold. He, the- he's bold. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's his hair phone down. Time is not a kind mistress, Neil. <laughs> it comes to us yeah, no, as, yeah, no, as I'm finding out, I've got to be honest. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, the old, it was a fantastic play. I mean, I, I, it's quite a long time ago. I think I have to I often have to correct myself, especially if we do have any listeners who are younger. But the impact that ET brought to us in the in the early nineties was his artistry, his his Dutch skill on the ball. Um, and his ability to rise to the big occasion. I mean, the, the, the game against um, Palace at home, three 0 is one of the great games um, in my Millwall, Millwall life. I think, um, and he's as much a character as he, he seems on camera as he did on the pitch. And a, it seems like a really genuinely nice bloke, Neil, doesn't he? From the little bits I've seen, he does. And I can remember him turning up to watch reserve games and things like that. And yeah when we moved to the den because he was part of that very early i think mark beard posted um how he was a youth at the time that et was yeah. with us and you know it's football so after training the blokes go to the pub but et stayed on to work with some of the kids on their sports skills and their technical side and 
you know, it's it's when when in I think in football when you read genuinely nice comments about another another figure, player, manager, whatever the case may be, you can generally bet that that's that's that these are decent bloke, and it, that was the impression that I just gained from the couple of social media clips that Dan's put out. So huge, well done to Dan. That's a massive scoop on his part. Mate, yeah. I've got to be honest. Through speaking to umpteen former Millwall players, I've only ever had one tell me to fuck off and put the fun down. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to have to reveal who that is sometime. I won't press you on it now, but there'll be another day. Yeah, well, I'll tell you who it is if you want. He's Go on, appeared on Lions TV. It was Dave Thompson. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and I was really? trying to find out what he did for this book. He just didn't want... Well, this was about 10 years ago. Right. And he just said, oh, no, fuck off, bang, put the phone down. Must so, have been having a bad day. Of the, maybe, yeah. Maybe, who knows? Um, but yeah. he came across as a decent bloke on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not... was, I've actually... But, all of them. You speak to Beardy, he's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, Mark Phillips, these are players that I've interviewed. Marvin Williams, what a, what a lad he was. Genuine blow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cherno Samba. Yeah. Uh, Darren Ward. Oh, Darren Ward, when I interviewed him, it was going to be, can we get this done in half an hour? Yeah. Two hours later, we're still, <laughs> he's still going. <laughs> Paul Roberts, what a character. And 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 a lot of the lesser known players that you that I found up for this book, yeah. I found up. Uh, I think it was Tony Brewer's wife. He right. died some time ago in Northampton. Yeah, yeah, she was actually in tears that I'd remembered her husband, and I was going to put him into this book. Yeah, George Jacks. When I spoke to him, yeah, brilliant, brilliant lad. It's a, it's a good point. I mean, I haven't done anything like the scale of player interviews that you've done, and and obviously Dan's been doing a lot. Um, we did a few during the lockdown, and I, I, I enjoyed it. I always get very nervous before I do it, listeners. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's just um, you, yeah, you don't want to you, you want to fuck it up, Neil, do you? You know, and, and yeah, but they're your heroes, aren't they? Absolutely, the end, yeah. And it's, you it's don't that. want to come across as a total fucking plank, do you? <laughs> well, no. Um, I mean, you, you know, I, you, you do this as you, we we do this show. I mean, you, you're journalist you're a proper journalist i'm I, I do it for a hobby effectively so you don't want to you want to you want to give a good impression and you want to produce something that's worth listening to so i always get very nervous when i do it but i just want to reinforce the point i mean i'm just thinking back to the ones that i have done and no one has been off with me or i don't know acted like they're something but you know something the big man type of thing you know um i've interviewed cascarino and a really nice bloke he took time to make himself available and and you know with aaron and and, and uh we did, we did um claridge these are genuine 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 people and i think sometimes you don't come across in football There's a lot of nice people involved in it Mate, especially the ex players. There's and back then they were just genuinely nice blokes. They were just normal guys. We, yeah, we yeah. go back to your point that a lot of them I don't want to interview Premier League footballers in 10, 20 years time. <laughs> I think I'll be a bit the, the pod game podcast game would pass me by then, but thank God for that for me, I tell you, Nick. It, it's but, just oh, one, it, it just it doesn't hold the same level of level of interest. No, I mean, and, I, I, and I just remember why, Trevor Lee, Neil. I mean, yeah. speaking to Trevor, I mean, he, he, he again, the same point. We've made it a few times. I won't, I won't flog it. But when he joined Millwall, he said he was actually earning more money initially working on a building site in Lewisham. But he said, give me a choice between playing for a living or, you know, being at the top of the tower in, in Lewisham working on the building while you go for the football. So these are regular people. And he was a very, very nice bloke. And same with Phil, Phil Walker. And, and um, I've spoken to Dorsey, you know, lovely bloke. And I think it's, it's, it, I don't know, maybe we're making it too much, but it's, it's, um, it's just interesting what genuine, decent people for the most part, especially our middle players seem to be. And I, I, I find it, find it, you know, it's, it's a really heartening thing. Yeah. It... Oh, yeah, but it's great. That I was just in awe that you spend two hours talking to somebody that you used to watch yeah. and you're trying to probe them. I hate interviewing people that I know mm. <laughs> and <laughs> find it very difficult to to have to switch into journalism mode. Journal mode, yeah. 
wouldn't quite call myself a proper journalist, but... <laughs> but I would. I would. Yeah, Anyways, no, <laughs> enough praise. We've already dished out enough praise for Definitely your... Definitely not one of them. But no, it, it, it's... You, you sat on the pod or you sat on the stream like you are now. Hmm. You're just chatting to them for an yeah. hour, two hours. Yeah. What a life, mate. Yeah. It, and, and I can see why Dan's done so many of them. It's just brilliant. It's just... You, you they, just... they they give you an insight. I mean, I, when, when I spoke to Ian Dawes, I mean, a, a player I really admired from the great days of our club, um, and it was just like a it, it was it was it was that odd thing. And I think we, we've touched on it here that you're kind of looking back at your own life through the prism of a player that was out there on the pitch in front of the Coblo Lane crowd, producing the great moments in the first division for us. And I don't know. It's like um, it's like a time machine. You're just transported back to those great days, and I think that's the beauty of it. So, um, this book, listeners, just to conclude us, because I think we're waffling now, otherwise, not you and me. I've just caught myself. My, my waffle alert's gone off, listeners. Um, this book is called Mills Who's Who. It will be on www.victorpublishing.co.uk. We think it's going to cost about twenty plus some postage and packing, 1999 or something. I put it in the ranks of the great Mill books. So I want to say well done to you, Neil. And I want to say well done to Dave and also to the other chaps, uh, Chris, and obviously now in the memory of, of Jim Creasy. It's, it, I recommend you buy it. So a big thank you, Neil, for plugging your book, mate. It's a bit like being on Parkinson, this, this interview, isn't it? Mate, it was, <laughs> and a lot less stress, but... It... <laughs> But we're genuinely, if people do want to pre-order it, go on to Victor Publishing, or or just or you will all just hit me up on Twitter or hit, hit you up, hit you up, oh, yeah. or hit Nick up on Twitter or just you know I'm trying to sound hit for the you're kids. Trying the, you're trying to get with the kids market, mate. Aren't you? I am seriously. I'm yeah. Well, I'm told that I haven't got enough grip on. <laughs> You thank you for your time, Neil Fistler. Well done for this, mate. Um, we will be pressing the, uh, the 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 link when it comes out, and do expect regular adverts on the show for it. Listen, we want to sell this one out, mate. And thank you, Neil. Appreciate it. Regular plugs everywhere. Absolutely. All the best. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Aston Millwall. If you enjoyed the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a cheeky little review. Go over to Aston Millwall. Till next time. Who do you want to watch?